Hello and welcome to another video by Hellenica.com, a platform dedicated on the Greek language, history and culture. My name is Margelena and today I will narrate to you some stories, lesser known stories, about some popular landmarks and sites in Athens, the capital of Greece. I'm talking about some places that are very well known, such as the Acropolis Hill, where the Parthenon is. And these stories even include some very peculiar deaths of people in power and even some ancient Athenian voodoo practices. So stay tuned, because the things you will hear are not easily found, especially by a simple Google search. And keep in mind that these stories blend history with rumors, urban legends and mythology. So please take everything with a grain of salt. So the first thing I would like to mention involves the ancient Agora, we call it Agora of Athens, and also the Pnika. So Agora means marketplace in Greek. And that's exactly what it was in classical Athens as well. It was a meeting point and a marketplace. Pnika, on the other hand, is a location on one of the hills of Athens overlooking the Agora, which was designated for public speaking and also for holding the regular assemblies during the years of direct Athenian democracy, of course. These assemblies were called Ecclesia. Now, some historians believe, based on some records from Thukydides, but also from some place from the ancient Greek comedian Aristophanes, that ancient Athenians did love to discuss politics, they loved gossiping, but most of them were not fans of going to the assemblies. They found them a little bit boring. And I want you to take this with a grain of salt because it is mostly based on an ancient Greek comedy. So things are a little bit more exaggerated there. So from what we know from Aristophanes and Thukydides, ancient Athenians would often hide in the Agora and continue gossiping whenever they were called to go up to the Pnika. It's actually quite tiresome to do so. So maybe this was also a reason <laughs> to avoid that. So what happened was that some people were assigned a very peculiar task. They would hold a rope painted in red color, which they would call Memilitomenon Schimion. And what they did is that they would start walking from the Agora towards the Pnika, forcing everyone who was on their way to just follow along. So yes, according to that, Sometimes, ancient Athenians would be forced to participate in direct democracy with a rope, literally. Now, as I said earlier, you should take this with a grain of salt, because other historians believe that this story is a bit exaggerated and that it was told by oligarchs who wanted to criticize direct democracy. Now, the next story is a little bit spooky, and it takes place in Keramikos, a very central and popular neighborhood of Athens. Now, in this area, you will find an archaeological site with the same name, which actually contains part of Ieraodos, the sacred way that Athenians would follow to go to the city of Eleusis, where they would hold the Eleusinian mysteries. I have made a separate video on that topic, actually. Now, I'm not going to analyze this for too long, but the Eleusinian mysteries were organized by a cult, which was dedicated to goddesses uh, Demeter and Persephone. They believed that through some rituals, they would be able to reveal some secrets about the afterlife. I want you to remember that Persephone was both the goddess of vegetation, whatever grows on the soil, but also the um, queen of the underworld, whatever is buried in the soil. Maybe you can see a connection there about the cycle of life. Now, this is not the story because this is actually quite well known and you can easily find this information if you Google about Iedaodos, the sacred way and LFCs. What most people don't know is 
what else they can find in Keramikos. So the Keramikos archaeological site also includes the Acropolis of ancient Athens. Necropolis means literally city of the dead and obviously it was the ancient cemetery of Athens. You can walk around and look at all the tombstones it is actually quite peaceful there. Of course, when archaeologists excavated the area, they found a lot of artifacts. Most of them were offerings to the dead that followed the traditional burial practices of that time. Nothing peculiar here. So basically, the archaeologists took all of these artifacts and in order to preserve them, they created a museum on this site where they make sure that they are safe from the elements and people can go and look at them. What is weird here is that along with the regular findings, such as the amphora and the jewelry, they also found some tablets with some messages written on them. And these messages were curses. And these curses were not targeting a person who had died and they just buried them with a curse. They targeted another living human being. And it's quite funny that many of them actually targeted a political or legal opponent of another Athenian. It's quite interesting seeing that one Athenian in particular was asking for his opponent in court to have his tongue tied when he would have to defend himself in front of the jury. And I guess this is where the term tongue tied comes from, who knows. Now you may be wondering why they were burying those curses into the ground next to people who have died. Well, few people know that ancient Greeks, even ancient Athenians in the classical times, believed in witchcraft. It was not legal, at least in classical Athens, but it still happened. Even some of the most prominent people in ancient Athens who tried to seek solutions to the problems in the paranormal, or even try to inflict harm on someone else with this way. If you are not new to this channel, you have probably watched the video on Hecate, the goddess of the dark, ghosts and witches. I mean, she has the whole package here. This goddess is not very well known because she didn't live on Mount Olympus with all the other more popular gods. She was ectonic deity living under the surface of the earth. And people believed that if they write a curse on a piece of stone and bury it with someone who had recently died, the soul of the dead would carry it to the underworld where Hecate lives. Hecate would find the stone and then she would decide whether she wanted to cast the curse on the other person or not. So yeah, the story here is that ancient Athenians did curse each other sometimes, especially politicians. The next story takes place in a very, very popular landmark of Athens. Can you guess which one I'm talking about? I'm talking about the Acropolis Hill, where you have the Parthenon and various other ancient Greek temples. Well, one of these temples is Erechtheon. Erechtheon was dedicated to uh, goddess Athena, but also to god Poseidon. Again, if you're not new to this channel, then you know that these two gods once competed against each other for the protection of the city of Athens. Obviously, as the name suggests, you know, Athens, Athena, Athenians voted for goddess Athena, you know, the goddess of strategy and wisdom. And that was because she made them an offer they could not reject. She presented to them the first olive tree from which they could produce olive oil and export it all around the Mediterranean. And actually, that was quite successful for them because they were able to make a lot of money from this business activity and they had a lot more time to think about philosophy and the arts. Well, a lot of people believe that you can actually find this first ever olive tree in front of Erechtheon. It is the olive tree that is exactly placed next to, the, to this temple. Now, as I said, a lot of the stories blend mythology and urban legends with historical facts. Obviously, we cannot prove that there is actually a goddess Athena and she made this tree spawn from the rocks. But we do know that 
it is, or at least it was, and I will explain myself later, one of the oldest trees of Athens. Now, if you look at it, you will notice that it looks very slender and not as old as other olive trees that live for hundreds of years. Well, that is because after World War II, this olive tree had sustained some damage and according to some reports of that time, they were able to take one branch, replant it, and another olive tree grew from there. Which is of course connected with this other olive tree that supposedly lived there for thousands of years. So the story here is that if you visit the Acropolis of Athens, you can still find the first olive tree of Athens, and maybe of the Mediterranean, according to mythology, which was created by goddess Athena herself. And for our last story, we have a very peculiar death of a royalty in Athens. So many of you might already know that um, modern Greece at some point also had a royal family. In 1920, we had a king named Alexander, King Alexander. He was 27 years old, but according to historians, he was stripped uh, of most of his powers from the liberal party in Greece and he was used as a puppet king. King Alexander had a dog and he loved walking with him through the forest that surrounded the royal estate in Athens. It's called Tatoi. So we have the Tatoi forest where he would love to explore with his dog. And we also had the royal gardens in the city center that he also loved to visit. Now, one day, the king decided to take his dog and go on one of his regular walks. Most people say that he chose the forest of Tatoi, but some others say that everything occurred in the national gardens of Greece, which back then were called royal gardens, and they're very close to the parliament in Sindagma Square. But let's just say that everything happened in Tatoi forest for now. As they were walking together, him and his dog, enjoying the nature, they suddenly saw two monkeys. Yeah, monkeys are not native in Greece. And the dog obviously started barking, the monkeys got scared. One of them went on and attacked the dog. The king then tried to separate the two animals and take his dog and run away. But then the second monkey just went ahead and started biting him. And the monkey somehow managed to bite him really hard on one of his legs. In the beginning, the wound didn't look very serious. It was treated and the king continued with his life. But then he started to have fever and they realized that the wound wasn't properly cleaned. Uh, a lot of bacteria had infected it and obviously, uh, medicine was not as improved as it is today, and this infection led to sepsis. The doctors would be able to save the king, King Alexander, by amputating his leg. However, according to some records, his own family, but also some other people who were in power in Greece, were against that because they believed that an amputated king would create a weak image for Greece. And this incident happened um, at a very crucial time for Greece. The Greco-Turkish war had started a year ago. Since Greece wanted to regain uh, some parts and entire regions in Asia Minor that were once part of the Byzantine Empire, King Alexander died of sepsis a few weeks after the incident with the monkey. His death actually created a political turmoil that some historians say that actually ended up causing the Great Fire of Smyrna, that some historians even speculate that it even caused the Great Fire of Smyrna in 1922. The subsequent exchange of populations between Turkey and Greece and the result was the great exodus of the Greek refugees from Asia Minor to mainland Greece. Winston Churchill has even wrote about this incident and he said, it is perhaps no exaggeration to remark that a quarter of a million persons died of this monkey's bite. Okay, now you may be wondering, 
what were these two monkeys doing in the forest in the first place? Well, according to some surviving records, these were actually two pet monkeys of a botanist who took care of not only the Datoy estate, but also the national gardens. He had imported them from Africa and kept them as pets. At that time, it was actually quite popular for rich people to buy exotic animals and have them live in their gardens or even in their own houses. As you can imagine, this incident has spread many rumors, with many believing that maybe there was not even a monkey attack at all. The king was assassinated and then they just said, oh, that was just an infection that was caused by a monkey attack. Uh, some others say that someone actually scared the monkeys and made them attack the king, on purpose, of course. Others say that the monkey attack did happen, it was an accident, but then the decision to not amputate the king's leg, which led to his uh, death, was actually a political move. We can't say what is true and what's not with 100% accuracy, however, the monkey attack it is considered a historical fact. And these were some of the craziest, hard to find stories about Athens. Now you know that a lot of ancient Athenians were a little bit bored of the democratic assemblies. They also loved to send curses to each other, which they buried in burial grounds. We also learned that there is a magic tree, a magic olive tree on the Acropolis hill. And lastly, that some monkeys did live in Athens some hundreds of years ago. They were imported, of course, and they did cause a political turmoil. I hope you have a great day or night. If you enjoyed watching it, don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, and I will see you again very soon. Bye.